We now have Ami Mehta coming to present on the stage. Ami is from IIT Bombay, Monash, and she's here to talk about the blood-brain barrier and how it can be modeled in the microfluidic chip. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for giving me this sort of opportunity to present my PhD work today. So during my PhD work, I have fabricated and developed a blood-brain barrier microfluidic chip that mimics the brain vasculature. So the human brain, as we know, is a very complex organ and capillaries form the essential infrastructure of the brain. If you look at the cross section of a capillary, it has a series of cerebral endothelial cells uh, that are closely linked to each other with tight junction molecules. Now these tight junction molecules are the one which form the structural and the functional barrier that stringently regulate the uh, movement of the molecules from the blood side to the brain side. So a uh, lot of microfluidic models have been developed to mimic this uh, blood brain barrier for the purpose of drug testing and uh, drug screening. So we have the 2D microfluidic models and, uh, which have been commercialized as well in the US. We have 3D microfluidic models which are based on the ECM gel and then uh, people have developed the vasculogenesis and organoid models based on stem cells and also use 3D printing materials. So to this we thought what more can we contribute. So the unique features of our BBB on chip is relies on natural ge geometry, the one which is usually seen in capillaries of the blood vessels and in the um, uh, branches of the trees. And uh, we have these kind of unique features which has semi elliptical cross section, branching hierarchy, heterogeneous fluid shear stress and neuroinflammatory response under dynamic conditions. So uh, to develop this kind of natural geometry, we have an alternative fabrication technology uh, which is just a one step non lithography method. It has, it involves this use of this parallel helishaw cell which has a, a parallel uh, top plate and a bottom plate. The bottom plate is attached to a motor and it performs a squeezing action and a lifting action. Now what if you place a highly viscous fluid between these two plates? Uh, so here you see uh, the top plate, it has anisotropic grooves and you place a highly viscous fluid. It's a video. Yeah, can, huh? play. No, can you play the video? Yeah, so uh, on uh, squeezing the liquid, the liquid flattens out and forms a film and when the plates are separated at a slow velocity, the air which is of low viscosity tries to push us in the highly viscous fluid and the air enters through these anisotropic grooves and it forms these kind of long air columns. These long air, air columns after multiple splitting events, they form a Cayley tree structure. So this kind of Cayley tree pattern was fabricated uh, by Professor Gandhi and his team at IIT Bombay. So uh, we've used the uh, Cayley tree geometry uh, for developing BBB on chip. So because uh, one, it mimics the geometry of blood vessels, it has these bifurcations and also it uh, uh, has a way, uh, the, just like blood vessels, they have variation in mean wall shear stress throughout the vascular bed. Because as you can see uh, from iota to capillaries, the radius varies and that, that can be mimicked in our geometry. So uh, the unique features of uh, this fabricated template is one, the height as I mentioned, the height of the first generation branch as you see here is 198 micron and for the second generation branch it reduces up to 114 micron and third generation microns about 56 micron. So there's a smooth transition in the height and uh, similarly for the branches, it is about uh, 1100 micron in the parent branch and then the daughter branches uh, reduces further to 800 and 500 microns. And the uh, cross section of this uh, fabricated template is semi elliptical in nature. So this is an advantage because the shear stress profile of semi elliptical cross section is similar to uh, the circular cross section 
and also the shear stress along the walls of the uh, micro channel is uniform because this is this is where the cells are cultured in uh, in a microfluidic chip so uh, the cells experience uniform shear stress now uh, in our template uh, we also saw that uh, by using computational fluid dynamics uh, that we uh, uh, observe heterogeneous shear stress distribution so for a fixed flow rate of 5 microliter per minute the parent branch uh, uh, experiences a shear stress of 0.1 dynes per centimeter square which further escalates up to 6 dynes per centimeter square in the third generation branches but uh, if it comes to uh, constant height rectangular micro channels fabricated by the conventional lithography process the um, uh, parent branch faces a higher shear stress just at the beginning in the parent branch about 4 dynes per centimeter square which reduces further to 1.6 dynes per centimeter square now having a shear stress a uh, high shear stress just at the beginning of the channel will result in detachment of the cells so it's not advisable to have such a uh, geometry uh, in rectangular micro channels so uh, when you have a flow rate from varying from 1 microliter to 20 microliter per minute we cover the entire range of the mean wall shear stress that is from 0 dynes per centimeter to 24 dynes per centimeter square so uh, using uh, human cerebral microvascular endothelial cells uh, we created the brain endothelium so as you can see it is a continuous sealed hollow 3d lumen and it also has this kind of branching hierarchy to uh, study uh, the brain endothelium so the first thing was to understand the effect of heterogeneous uh, shear stress uh, within the singular system so as under static conditions the cells are randomly aligned over here as you can see it peaks at different directions because it, uh, the actin cytoskeleton fibers are randomly aligned but under dynamic uh, conditions uh, when you apply a shear stress of 5 microliter per minute the first branch which uh, experiences a uh, very low shear stress has randomly aligned actin cytoskeleton but as the shear stress increases they start aligning towards uh, one direction and with the highest shear stress experienced in the third generation branch for 6 dynes per centimeter square they are completely aligned in the direction of the fluid flow now uh, this is very important because the more the aligned the actin cytoskeleton the more better the formation of the barrier and its integrity so we also then next check the uh, 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 the uh, the tight junction network and we saw that uh, uh, under static conditions they uh, they were randomly aligned and under uh, higher conditions they had a, a continuous uh, uh, tight junction network and they also had varied intensity uh, in the different uh, branches of each generation especially in the third generation branches so this was for the branches now for the nodes we see that the nodes uh, the fluid bifurcates at the nodes so uh, we saw that they were uh, aligned at two different directions at minus 45 and plus 45 degree and at the apex of the nodes we saw that the uh, actin cytoskeleton is uh, stretched uh, very nicely over here and uh, also has a really good continuous network of tight junction now this is important for cell making decisions during angiogenesis so this is because uh, the uh, velocity gradient uh, uh, reduces to zero and the stagnation pressure starts building up at the nodes now under the stagnation pressure the wall shear stress gradient is formed which is essential for vessel stabilization and vascular function in vivo so we also saw the permeability of uh, uh, bbb by uh, uh, developing this bilayer model where we had a 3 mm well just below the third generation branches where the highest shear stress is experienced and we saw that the uh, uh, because of the formation of the barrier the permeability was significantly reduced so we also saw that uh, heterogeneous shear stress activates the mechano transduction in endothelial cells by uh, showing an uh, upregulation of the uh, uh, v catherin and uh, cd31 proteins we also saw an upregulation of drug transporter protein the p glycoprotein and the induction of f actin network and also a uh, wide proteomic study shows that there was an upregulation of cytoskeletal and tight junction proteins signal transduction pathways and metabolic pathways so metabolic pathways is the third level of barrier 
So, uh, we also uh, as an application studied uh, neuroinflammation that uh, we, uh, we in uh, usual conventional models uh, TNF alpha is added to the static uh, trans wells, but this is not the case in vivo. The, there's a stoppage, if there is a stoppage of blood flow, the brain will stop functioning. So, we had uh, st uh, uh, addition of TNF alpha to the cell culture media under dynamic conditions, the cells were studied and uh, as expected there was a discontinuous network of uh, tight junctions and uh, the full length proteomic studies show that there was a uh, 3.5 fold increase in Im immune surveillance, the inflammatory pathways and there was also a down regulation of cytoskeletal and tight junction proteins, but there was an up regulation of metabolic pathways suggesting that they have started metabolizing the uh, cytokines. So, this comes to an end where I have all the unique features of our BBB on chip are listed here and uh, so for further reading you can go look at the uh, paper in advanced biology and I would like to thank all my supervisors, Professor Prasanna Gandhi at IIT Bombay, Professor Nico at Monash and Professor Prakriti Tialia at IIT Bombay and uh, all the funding agencies. Thank you. Thank you, Ami. In the interest of time and for our next talk, yes. uh, I request you to please contact Ami if you have any further comments or questions. Okay, we do have time for one question maybe. Hi, Ami. Uh, really great talk. Uh, especially your design was really fascinating. Uh, just one question. Uh, the fabrication method that you showed, uh, is it repeatable? Like. Yes, yes, it's robust and uh, repeatable and it's also scalable, you can increase the generation also. So, the dimensions are like ev every time the dimension will be same or it will be varying? Like yes, it's within the error limit, yeah. Okay, thank you. One more question perhaps? Thank you for very interesting talk. Just I have a quick question. How do we measure shear strain? Is it a FM or atomic force so microscope? So, we measure shear stress using computational fluid dynamics. Okay. Uh, so, it's a simulation based method, but uh, there's an alternative method to measure shear stress by particle velocimetry. So, basically you flow the beads at a certain uh, flow rate and you calculate the speed by which the beads flow through the channel. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amin. Thank you.